she heard Dr. Weeks speak about the innate potential present in everyone for the divine healing through the use of affirmative prayer. She began regularly affirming, I'm a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. Over time, she was healed of the tuberculosis and she went on to teach and to be a model of healing for so many others. And I think her complete healing took about two years. Her husband, Charles Fillmore, affirmed his own healing. And so many came to them for help. They were an example that others were drawn to. So they opened up their regular prayer gatherings and together they created the Society for Silent Prayer which is now what we know as silent unity. They had no intention of creating a church and no intention of creating a religion, but their work was so powerful that it expanded. It, it drew people to it and it continued to develop so much so that we are now a worldwide organization. Now unity is not considered a religion. It's considered a new thought system because there's no dogma and churches are formed based on dogma. Unity has no dogma. Each unity center is an entity unto its own and most centers choose to be part of Unity Worldwide Ministries as we are. Now, Unity Worldwide Ministries provides us with the materials for governance. That is, you know, they provide the templates for bylaws. They provide job descriptions, policy manuals, and they offer support for the individual ministries for every, in every area of um, functioning. Now, some of you may have been part of Unity Spiritual Center since it started. In 1985, Walter and Catherine Chauncey started a Unity study group in their home. Um, Walter Chauncey then asked Audrey Palmer, a licensed Unity teacher candidate, to facilitate their weekly classes. Audrey accepted, became a licensed Unity teacher, then went on to ministerial school in 1987. When she returned, her first service as Minister of Unity of Lebanon took place on August 1st, 1989. Now, Unity of Lebanon grew and a larger meeting space was needed. So they rented various locations in Huntington County, but they also had a vision of having their own space. At that same time, the Huntington Hills VFW was considering selling their building. So they were clear and they had a vision and they wanted the building to be used for servicing the community. So as I said before, all minds joined and the two came together. And in 1999, Unity of Lebanon rented the space and closed on the purchase in June, 2000. Since they were no longer in Lebanon and were now in Pattenburg, the name was officially changed to, from Unity of Lebanon to Unity Spiritual Center. Now we all know, or most of us know and love Audrey. She was a dear friend when I was serving in another ministry and, and she really, she continues to be a dear friend. She served as minister here for 24 years and retired in August, 2013. And then Reverend Terrence Paget served as the transitional, transitional minister for 18 months. And then I became the minister here February 15th, 2000, February 1st, 2015. So it's six years tomorrow. Oh. Many of you have been part of Unity Spiritual Center from its beginning. And some of you found your way here as you've moved forward on your spiritual path. We all have one thing in common. We are here to remember who we are. We are here to ignite that spark, to foster that flame of oneness that light within us. And this is our common ground. This is our purpose. We are here to be the light in the world and shine that light onto others. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are a member of Unity Worldwide Ministries 
and they provide us with the basic structure uh, for a nonprofit organization. And since we're having our, our quarterly meeting today, I thought it, it would be appropriate to share some of what that structure is. There are four different categories of churches. And these categories are based on the size of the center and the number of the members for that center. Um, the size of the center indicates the duties that are assigned. Um, so the smallest church is called a family size and that's up to 50 people. We're considered a family center, but because of all that we do here when we're fully up and functioning, we border on the pastoral size, which is between 50 and 150 people. The other categories are a program church, which, which is between 150 and 300 people, and a corporate church is above 350. The larger the group, the more opportunities there are for classes and events, but I really prefer the intimacy of a smaller group. It, it allows us to really get to know each other and to really feel the connection that we all have, the connection that exists within this community. For the most part, unity churches and centers are small and are family or pastoral in size, but there are a couple that are large. The, there, um, we all know Eric Butterworth's center that was in Manhattan had thousands of people. So Unity of New York still is large. It's probably a, um, a program sized church. Um, and then there's a large one in Miami and a large center in Chicago. Now we as Unity Spiritual Center are very transparent in all that we do, which is why we have our quarterly meetings. We have our annual meetings. We report at every, almost every Sunday service, we keep you abreast of what's going on. And um, we keep you all updated on what's discussed at board meetings. Now, even though family and pastoral, pastoral sized churches center around the minister or the spiritual leader, we're unique in that we have extended our leadership. We are more of a mission-based center than a minister-based center. And that means that we are all involved in what goes on at Unity. And, you know, besides myself as the leadership, we have our board members. Our board members are, is part of the leadership and so far small group leaders. You know, Connie Wilson runs the Joel Goldsmith and has for many, many years. And she's run other groups. John and Lainey Bevan facilitate the Course in Miracles group. They both have been doing that for years. And another example of the leadership is our music ministry. And I know we use the term team, but the music team is really a ministry because the music they perform are not just songs. These songs are these truly reflect and support the te teachings of unity, making it a ministry. And of course, we have our prayer ministry, which continues to offer prayer to everyone that um, requests it. We hold those prayers here for 30 days, and then we send them off to silent unity, where they're held again for another 30 days. Now, we're calling this time, it's been called the Great Pause. And that great pause has caused us to change. So now we meet on Zoom, but even though we're experiencing this great pause, our teams, our ministries continue to work. We see the work of our music ministry every Sunday. Um, we know the work of our prayer ministry because they're constantly, they're dedicated to, to prayer, to supporting everyone in prayer. And there are many, many who take great effort into making sure that Unity Spiritual Center runs smoothly, whether we're in the building or whether we're online. And believe me, the building is still being maintained. It's still being taken care of. And we'll talk about that more during the quarterly meeting. Now, ministry has been, a diagram for ministry has been a stool, a stool with three legs. So the two legs of the stool um, are the minister and the teams, and the third leg is the congregation, is the membership. 
So that th three-legged stool represents a healthy center. Again, the first leg is the minister or spiritual leader. The second leg are the other leaders and the third leg is the membership. And all three support and express our vision, mission, and values. Now, if you remember, we revisited our vision, mission, and values and our growth affirmation at the January 2020 meeting. And we changed. We changed them because as we grew as a center, we, we, we changed as a center and grew in consciousness. It was time to revisit these and, and adjust them to who we are and what we represent now. The, our vision, mission, and values represent who we are as a center and what we have come here to do. You know, now with any ministry comes responsibilities and regarding responsibilities, I'm responsible for the overall administration of operations and the day-to-day -day fiscal management of Unity Spiritual Center, as well as Sunday services and classes and workshops and anything that goes on. There are 32 items listed in the Unity Worldwide Ministries manual that are that describe the job description for the minister or spiritual leader. And I am responsible to really create and foster an environment where each individual feels loved, accepted, and supported, and is enriched by being part of this community. I'm here to empower you to acknowledge and accept the truth of who you are, the Christ. I'm here to support you in realizing your divine nature. And I'm committed to doing that by providing Sunday talks, classes, activities that promote self-awareness, self-love, self-mastery, and personal growth. And then next in the leadership, we have our board members. Now there are 27 items on the Unity Worldwide board member job descriptions. But if you take them all, they can be summed up in two categories, to conduct the business of the center and to support the spirit, spiritual leader. The board members seek out ways to cut costs, to make sure we have sufficient funds to meet our financial needs, to think of ways to raise funds, to look into opportunities and activities that enhance this center. And because we have our own physical building, they are also here to help maintain that building and make sure that the operations run. Each board of member has a list of responsibilities and signs a board code of ethics agreement. I also sign a code of ethics agreement, not only with our ministry, but with Unity Worldwide Ministries. And in order to stay in good standing as a unity minister, I have to complete a minimum of 10 CEU credits each year by attending classes, workshops, conferences, or the convention. And again, that third leg of the stool is you, the congregation, the membership. Now the board represents the membership. So basically you empower the board to conduct the business of the center on your behalf. Once you walk through our door or attend our Zoom services, we embrace you as part of our community. We center around the fact that there is one. We recognize and acknowledge and support each one of us in recognizing the Christ within and living our divinity. So as soon as you walk in these doors, you are part of us and we support you in that. Now, in order to become a voting member where you can vote on any changes that may be presented, you're required to take two classes. One is a communications class, the other is Unity 101, which is the history and philosophy of the Unity movement. Now, regarding responsibilities, there are responsibilities for our membership too, and that's to attend services, to attend the community and annual meetings whenever possible, to take classes, attend events, participate in volunteer opportunities and to support one another as part of this community and to keep this community going. Now, of course, you're not expected to be here every, at every Sunday service or at everything we, we offer, 
but we welcome your willingness to support and take part in opportunities that you feel particularly drawn to that fit your talents and where you can develop personally and spiritually because that's what we're here for. <laughs> in Unity, we talk about the four T's and that's tithing of time, talent, and treasure. We just participated in our first multi-center 4T training and it was great. There was Unity of Cape Cod, Unity of Radiant uh, Light on uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and Unity Spiritual Center. We all joined together as one and offered the 4T class. Now 4T or tithing is a biblical teaching, a spiritual principle, but it's not a requirement. I do know though personally tithing changed my life. I began tithing in the 90s and my whole world opened up. Tithing is spoken about in Leviticus 27 and in Proverbs 3 verse 9. And it explains that giving of 10% of your earnings or the first, the top of 10% of your earnings go to God. And, but we need to also be clear that tithing isn't a way to earn God's love because you already have that. And there's nothing that can, can or would cause that to stop. So some centers or organizations teach that you must tithe or else you will not be in God's good graces. We know that's not a fact. And when it comes to tithing, it's more of a spiritual decision than a financial decision because tithing isn't about money, it's about the heart. It's living with the attitude that we are blessed and we are grateful and we give as we receive. Now, 2 Corinthians 9 says, each of you should give what you have decided to give, you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So again, tithing is a principle, but above all, you have to feel comfortable within your heart and do what your heart tells you to do. God loves a cheerful giver and we are here to be cheer cheerful. We are here to accept and know that peace, joy, and love is our natural state. Now, Unity Spiritual Center is not confined to a building. We've proven that. Unity has no limitations. Unity Spiritual Center has no limitations. Unity Spiritual Center is you. It's all of us. We comprise, create, and we recreate what Unity Spiritual Center is. At the beginning of this um, pandemic, when we moved in March to Zoom meetings, we understood and I shared that we are moving through this as part of our evolution. We are recreating Unity Spiritual Center. And we will, when we can, move back into the building and hold services once again in our building. But we are not going back to what we were. We continue to create and recreate. Each of us is committed to the expansion of consciousness, to practicing the five Unity Principles to the best of our abilities, and to work together for growth, physical, emotional, and spiritual growth of each individual person and the center as a whole. You are Unity Spiritual Center. Your presence, your participation is what creates this center. And we are so grateful that you have chosen to be part of this community. We are so grateful that we all continue to sustain the heart and soul of Unity Spiritual Center. Bless you and thank you for being such an important part of this community. And now I'd like to invite you to just get very comfortable in your seats. And just close your eyes as we move into meditation. And as you take a deep breath, you just feel yourself relaxing 
as you release it. And once again, with each breath you take, you remove any pressure that you may feel, any burdens that may be on your shoulders. Just release them and let them go and allow yourself to relax more and more. And you place your awareness on the center of your being, on your heart. And you feel the love that you are radiating, just radiating from that center. Nothing else exists. There is only love. And now I allow myself to remove the distractions of the world as I focus on the truth of who I am. I am the love of God. I am the expression of God in this world. I am here to spread my light, to spread my love, and to above all remember that there is only one of which I am a part. I recognize the Christ and the divinity in each living thing. I recognize that we are all blessed by the awareness that we are part of the whole. I know the Christ within me guides and directs me in all that I do. And the Holy Spirit is always available to help me change my mind, to help me see things differently when I am in the midst of pain and conflict. I know that pain and conflict are worldly creations, not divine creations. So I allow myself to turn to the Holy Spirit whenever I need help. Spirit is always there, always accessible, always within my reach. And I choose to seek that help when I need it. I choose to live from my truth, from my Christ self. And now I allow myself to go deeper and deeper into the silence. And I just listen. And now I bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer. Our unity prayer list and those on silent unity. We affirm and know that there is a power and presence within them that will see them through any difficulties that they are experiencing. And we share our love and we share healing with them and we extend that we extend that throughout to all of humankind. And now I invite you to bring your consciousness back into your body. 
back into the room where you are. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And this is the time of our service where we have the opportunities to give. So I 